So year seven, this is a demonstration on how to make bread. So you need three ingredients for bread. You need 250 grams of strong flour, a pinch of salt, and you need one sachet of yeast, or which is about seven grams of yeast. So I'm going to start off by having 250 grams of flour in my bowl, and then you need one pinch of salt that goes in, and then you put your whole packet of yeast in your bowl. So yeast is a living organism, which means that it can, um, it's alive, it's like a plant, it's like a mushroom. <coughs> so with your yeast, you need to wake it up again. So in order to wake it up, we need to feed it. So we fed it the pinch of salt, and then we need to give it warm water. That will mean that the dried yeast will become back alive. And when it comes alive, it produces carbon dioxide. Okay, As it produces the carbon dioxide, the gas will go into the bread. It will get trapped in the bread and then that's what makes the bread rise okay so now i've got my salt and my sugar uh, salt sorry my yeast and my flour i've just mixed that in and then i've got 200 ml of warm water in my measuring jug your measuring jug um you must make sure that you're accurately using it so make sure that it's on the table make sure you're looking at ml make sure you've let the liquid settle the water has to be warm so that might mean that you've got a little mix of the hot tap and the cold tap. I recommend you touch the water with your finger before you put it in the bowl. If the water feels like it is cold, then it's too cold for the yeast. If it burns your finger, it's too hot for the yeast. So it needs to be warm. And then you need to add your uh, water. It can go in in one go if you've done an accurate measurement. So my water goes in and you mix it in with a butter knife. So mix it round in the centre first, make sure it's all mixed up, and then take the flour from the side of the bowl, scrape it all off and mix that in two. It will start to come together and it will create a dough. So make sure that you're mixing in all the flour Okay. So once you've got a dough in your bowl, you can get your hand in, just coat it around, make sure you've got as much of that flour and ingredients uh, rubbed in as you can. So I'm just mixing it all up to get it all mixed in. Okay, like that. So if your measurements are correct, your product should look like that as well. If your product looks like a bowl of porridge, then you've not measured your liquid properly or you've not measured your flour properly. With bread, it is better to have a um, stretchier mixture, a slightly stickier mixture, than it is to have a really dry mixture. Because if the bread dough is too dry, when the yeast starts to produce carbon dioxide, it will get trapped and it won't be able to go anywhere and your bread won't rise anymore. Okay, So at the moment, the warm water will have woken the yeast up and it will be starting to produce carbon dioxide. But I need to help it. And to help it, I need to knead it. Okay, So kneading is the new skill that you're going to be doing for this practical. You've been focusing on your knife skills up until this point. So you use the um, base of your hand, the bottom of the palm of your hand, and you're going to squash down and stretch the dough and then you're going to wrap it back up into a dough ball. If it starts to get sticky, then you do not keep going because it will get worse and worse. You stop, you've got these flour shakers that are around the room and you can sprinkle some of that onto your dough and then move it out of the way. Because remember what I said, we do not want to make this dough too dry. So if I put a whole pile of flour on my dough and then I keep kneading it into the dough, it's going to get too dry. We want it to be nice and stretchy so that the yeast can activate. That's your key word I'm looking for. You know, we've learned about enzymic browning. It's activation, your yeast activation. So you can see it's quite stretchy. I need to knead it. I'd like you to be able to knead your bread for around five minutes. Some of you might even be able to knead it for 10 minutes if you're quick enough and you keep up to my timings. If you bring in your ingredients already weighed, that would definitely help you because you'll be able to get straight on with your practical. Whereas if you bring in a giant bag of flour, you're going to spend the first five minutes trying to weigh out 250 grams. Okay. So with your um, kneading of your dough, you've got a couple of ways you can do it. So you can either do 
two hands. So if you've got smaller hands, then it might be that you use both palms, spread the dough out like this, and then wrap it back up and do it like that. And that is a perfect way of kneading, and that's the way to do it with two hands. Or you can do it um, with one hand, um, which is how I do it, which is where I squash down, and then I hook my fingers underneath the bread and bring it back like that, okay? So I'm just going to put some flour back onto my bread and then I will show you how to do it a bit quicker. So, so squash down, hook under, bring back, opposite hand, squash down in the opposite direction, hook under, bring back. So hook, hook, hook and then you'll be able to do it much quicker you'll be able to go from hand to hand you'll be able to put pressure on it i am pressing down with my um with my body weight because otherwise if you're just going like this that's not going to do anything you're just rolling it round and making it a mess okay you need to be kneading it so it's a good sign if it starts to go a little bit sticky but you must keep on top of it do not let it go too sticky, otherwise you'll just make a mess. So keep using little sprinklings of flour and then get straight back into your kneading. The texture will change of your bread when you've been kneading for a few minutes. It will go from that like crumbly powdery dough that it was a moment ago um, to quite a spongy dough with a smooth surface. And you'll be able to see that in a second. Um, that's a good sign because that means that your dough is starting to rise already. And then when you place it in the oven, it should be nice um, and well risen when you are done. You will be shaping this into cobs. You'll be splitting your dough into either four or six and then rolling them into individual cobs so that they bake in time of the lesson. You cannot just put the whole thing on your baking tray because it will uh, take a lot longer to bake than we have lesson time for. So as you can see, I'm still kneading. I did say to you that I'd like you to do at least five minutes, really. If you are too slow with making your dough, then you might have less than that. It will still make bread, but it will be a lesser quality bread. And we are obviously looking for quite high quality. So if I show you the difference in texture, so can you see now that it's a lot smoother? Yeah, it's less powdery, it's less um, clumpy. And then by spongy, what I mean is I should be able to press into the bread and it gives a bit of force back, okay? Rather than when at the beginning, it was a very kind of wet day, wasn't it? And I could have just uh, split it all up, but now it's starting to sponge back and the grooves where my finger gone into the dough are starting to come back out. Can you see that? That's because the yeast is producing carbon dioxide, which is making it plump back up again because it's starting to rise already, okay? So when you have kneaded your dough for about five minutes and your teacher will tell you when it's time to stop and start shaping, you just use your butter knife, cut your dough roughly in half. I do four, so cut it in half again. And then you just want to roll them into dough balls. And then to try and stop them from having a creased top, you can stretch it out and then stretch it under and then pinch it underneath and then all those bits are at the bottom and the top has a much smoother surface so you'll also be having a go at like your your shaping and your appearance if you wanted to and you've got time you could do a little um, plait so I've even split just one of my quarters. So if you know how to braid or plait here, you could plate, uh, plait or braid the bread. So you just need three, three parts. Lay them down. You want them to be equal thickness in equal length. So lay them down like this. Press them down gently at the top. And then to plait here, you need to take the outside, put it in the centre, and then the centre needs to go on the outside the opposite way, okay? Or you can take the centre to the outside, and then take the new centre to the opposite way. So if I take this centre piece, 
and I place it on the outside. I've got a new centerpiece here. That now needs to go this side. So that will go under. So I've got a new centerpiece. So that needs to go this side. Now my new centerpiece needs to go that side. New centerpiece, new centerpiece. Like that. And then you can pinch it and then you can undo this side if you've pressed it down quite gently. And you can just neaten it up slightly. Like that. So you've got a little plated loaf. Okay, so that could go on your tray. And then again, you can just go into a ball. So remember, press it out, tuck it under, pinch it underneath. Keep that bit tucked away and hidden so it's nice and smooth on the top. Or if you can't plait but you still want a bit of shaping, then just um, divide it into two. And just twist it. Like that, and then that can go on. So your bread tray will look something like that, and then that will go in the oven, um, and they will take about fifteen to twenty minutes to bake, and they should be nice and golden brown on the surface. If you've kneaded it properly and you used nice warm water, then hopefully these will expand in size and they should be a little bit bigger um, by the time you take them um, out of the oven.